virtual private network options on the Cisco ASA. What exactly are our options? What type of VPNs can we implement on the ASA? That's what this micro nugget is all about. Let's jump in. Virtual private networks are pretty darn cool. And on the Cisco ASA, it supports a lot of different flavors of VPNs. So I want to take a moment. We're going to talk about what exactly are the options for VPNs. Why? Well, we want to make sure that we know our options. We can pick the right solution to meet a business need. So we'll take a look at what the VPN types feel like to the end user and also those decision points based on the set of criteria to help us decide exactly which one of these VPN options is perfect for our situation. The two major classifications are, first of all, remote access VPNs and site to site VPNs. Let's start off with remote access. Typically, that's where we're going to have a user. Maybe they're at their home, they're at a kiosk, they're at a remote location. They're not at some site of your company, but they're connected to the internet and they want to build a tunnel. Why? Why does he want to build a tunnel? Well, this user, let's say it's Bob. Bob wants to build a tunnel to this ASA so that he can get access maybe to a critical resource on the network. He needs information off that file server. The internet's not trusted, so we build a VPN over this leg of our journey. There are several types. Bob, and we have Lois here, and we have Susan three users and they all have different scenarios. So let me walk you through these options. The first option listed on the left is called the SSL VPN clientless option. No client required. Well, Keith, how's it work? Smoke and mirrors? Almost. We use a browser because virtually every browser on the planet, you have Firefox and you have Chrome, you have Internet Explorer and Safari. They've all got the support for SSL built into it. I've got a micro nugget on SSL if you want to check that out, but SSL is a way to set up encryption between a device and a server. We leverage that ability to do secure sockets layer to build a VPN tunnel from Bob over to the ASA. Now with a clientless option, there's no installation required. There's no administration rights required on his machine, so he could be anywhere. This could be an unmanaged machine, meaning the company doesn't manage it. He could be at a kiosk. He could be borrowing a friend's computer. And it doesn't take a lot of administrative support. Bob connects with SSL, verifies the authenticity of the ASA1 based on its digital certificate using SSL, and then Bob's asked to authenticate. Bob proves who he is to the ASA and then gets access. That's the clientless SSL VPN. It's pretty amazing. The problem with that is, though, you work through a portal. So Bob logs in, he gets this screen, and if he wants to access that server, it kind of has to be as if it's going through that screen. So if this is his portal screen, Bob has to do basically everything out of this screen that's then sent over the VPN tunnel and over to the server. He doesn't have full native access. Like this PC here at dot .60, that PC's got native access to everything. Bob, unfortunately, with clientless SSL, has to kind of work through a portal. I'll show you that here in just a moment. And here's Lois, she's also on the internet, also remote access, but she wants a full experience, a full network experience. She wants an IP address like dot .50 here on the 10 network so she can do any protocols and things she wants on the local network. To do that, it's gonna require some software to be installed. Now there's some creative ways of installing that software, to be sure, but it does require administrative rights to initially install the AnyConnect software client on this PC. Once it's installed, she builds a full SSL VPN tunnel. She's given a logical IP address like .50 or .51 or something from this subnet normally. And then once she's connected, she's just like any other device on this network. She has full access. She can ping and use applications and interact with everybody else as if she's a local device on that network. So for her, it feels like once after she's connected, she lives on the network. It's fantastic. Very similar to the user experience right here. The other option for remote access is using the IPsec traditional client. So the IPsec client, which is sometimes called the IPsec VPN client, would give this user, maybe Susan, the same experience. Except instead of using SSL, it's using IPsec for the security and the authentication between Susan's computer and the firewall. But once she's connected, maybe she's given IP address dot 53. And she has the same look and feel as if she was locally on the network herself. We can also use the AnyConnect software client. It can also use IPsec for that type of tunnel as well. So we have two options for full tunnel access. And that is we have the SSL option with AnyConnect and we have the IPsec option, which can be done by the VPN client or from the AnyConnect client. 
So let's first take a look at the clientless aspect. This is a PC that's sitting out here on the network. We'll do an IP config just to make sure it's IP address. So it's at dot 20, no problem. We'll open up a browser and without any installation of any client whatsoever, we'll just go to HTTPS and the IP address of the outside interface. And I'm gonna log in as clientless user and the password is something really top secret. And this is what it feels like and looks like. So now if I wanted to access some resource here, even though my PC is on the outside of the firewall, I could put in the IP address of 10.0.0.5, which is the IP address of the server, press on browse, and it would take me to that server. It also gives me some really cool navigational tools, but basically this is my portal. Everything I wanna do for the corporate network, I get to do through this portal. And there's some cool options like smart tunnels and plugins and so forth, but basically it's kind of a get there through this portal type of a situation. And then we can create bookmarks to make it convenient for that user. Let's also go in with the AnyConnect. I'm gonna go ahead and connect, and there's a user called SSL user. Now that it's connected, I wanna show you something really, really amazing. And that is this. See my IP address up here of 192.168.1.20? I still have that global address, but check this out. If I do IP config now, I also have a second address, and that's right here. So this address of 10.0.0.51 was assigned to me dynamically by this ASA. So it's as if I'm sitting here, dot .51 on this network, and I should be able to do virtually anything that any other device on that local area network can do. I also have split tunneling set up so that only traffic that is destined to the 10 network is gonna go through the tunnel. So we did a ping, for example, of 10.0.0.5. That should work. That's our server right here. If we open up a browser and we went to 10.0.0.5, now I can go there natively now. I don't have to go through any portal or anything else because I'm a full native client. And if we launch the VPN IPsec client, which the icon's right here, it would look and feel virtually identical. In this micro nugget, we've identified three types of remote access VPNs. And we looked at what they felt like. The SSL client goes through a portal and the other two clients, which are software installed clients, they have an IP address. It looks and feels like they're sitting on that corporate network, which is a blast because it's really painless for the user. It's the same experience they'd have if they brought their laptop and they plugged it in locally at the network itself. Now, what are the decision points? Well, the decision points for which one to use are if you don't have one of these two clients physically installed on the hard drives of the computers and the users don't have administrative privileges, those client options are out. So if you have an unmanaged machine, remote, but it does support SSL, the clientless SSL option is really your only option. Now, if the user does have local administrative rights and or the software is currently installed and they want full access to the network with a real IP address on the inside, you could use SSL and the AnyConnect client or the IPsec VPN client, or you could use the AnyConnect IPsec option to build that remote access VPN tunnel. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.